So, my decision kind of stands. We're going to extort tribute from him. We are still fairly young, so we're going to have a long-standing tributary here. So let's do that. We're not going to call in ally troops as is custom. We fight our own wars. Let's group these already. Put our king on the side here. Let's check the land if maybe there isn't a good commander out there to be had. Oh yeah, he's, he's decent. Let's have him. And this guy isn't bad either. So let's have some better soldiers for us. He is doing his spy master thing and he hates us, so he's not gonna pay any tax. But he won't be long for this world, so I don't worry all that much. Oh, okay. He wants to resolve the decision by paying tribute to me. So we actually don't really have to fight him. However, we could just fight him. Doesn't really matter. Let's just take it. We don't need to lose our troops in a senseless war. So, okay, we've invited new people, can press a de jure claim, yeah we can, but I believe we're still at a truce with this guy, are we not? Yes we are, 796, still a few more years we can, until we can do this. We want to build this up, we need to let our troops recover a bit, so we become equal to this guy. Actually more powerful than this guy too, so we can just force him to become a tributary. We're just the biggest bully in the yard. That is what's happening. Okay, so there's a marriage that can happen now. We shall allow it. There's someone to imprison. Let's ask him to end the plot because his imprisonment is not going to go well. He plots to kill us, I believe. Let's have him married to someone. There you go. Go ahead and marry. Be happy. Speaking of happy. Let's look at our vassals here. It's looking okay currently. Let's look at our laws. Tribal organization. What does this do? Ah, uh, we don't really want that. Not currently. Let's check what we need to do to become feudal in the end. We need... Stonehill Fort. And we need absolute tribal organization. So, eventually we need to get up to this. There's really no way around it. However, going here... Gives the council more power. Currently, there is nothing here. Let's go ahead and request more troops from our tribal vassals. We want more troops. Why can I change it a second time? Usually, you can't. Interesting. Let's switch this first. Let's go up a bit. Why can I change these so often? Okay, so now my council has some power because they get to decide on certain issues and topics and I can't just rule independently anymore. I now have to consider my council. So it's important that these guys like me or that if they don't, they go away. 
So he is fabricating a claim nowhere. Nowhere, really. Let's... Let's fabricate a claim over here. So we can start eating away at him. She needs some education. Let's have her be this. Her betrothed might die before they ever become something. Right. So, what's going to happen when we die is all these boys are going to get one of these counties. And they're going to be vassals of our heir. Which at some point might be difficult for us. Might spell trouble. Because they have claims, obviously, on the same things we do. Let's speed up a bit. Since we're mainly waiting for our troops to replenish. So we can become even more threatening and powerful. Can probably build something here. Let's see. Yeah, we're trying to get him to, to be our friend. But that failed. <laughs> Let's build a war camp. Now, something to note about these. You can see... It says, will convert when upgraded to a castle. It's quite necessary to build those that will convert to something first. Uh, so when you adopt feudalism, you're not, la you're not stuck with nothing in your city. But it actually has something already. So one of our sons needs some education. He's going to be very sensibly educated in the arts of stewardship. There's already a lot of points here, so that's good. We have enough technology points to advance some technologies. Actually two. We can go for military organization, which we're definitely going to do. So we get probably even more retinue. And we can increase legalism or majesty. These are the most interesting early on. Because majesty gives us even more prestige and more piety. And it will decrease our malice for having reigned a short term. Legalism allows us for more laws to be implemented. Now, right now, as far as I can tell, there's really... There's really no good reason to do that. So we're actually going to put these points in majesty. And we could spend more, but we're not going to do this. Not now. We'll let the points accumulate. Now let's check our retinue. And as I said, we can have now much more retinue. Even more than we already have. We need to check our balance here. Looking good. Now this we can't do too much of because our... Who we are influences this. So our air might not have as much so we need to be careful so we don't kill our heir in terms of prestige once they come of age so we're going to stick with this just have some more cavalry there He has killed two people. How many have we killed? No one. Well, aren't we the warrior? <laughs> so we're earning all right for a tribe. What are we going to earn much more once we got him as a tributary? Oh, interesting. So a small army of warriors has come up, which... Looks a little bit more like a large-ish army of warriors. 400... 93. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. How many has he have? Well, he has his vessels here. Who can field some troops themselves as well. So we have about a year. Before our troops are going to, you know, be upset about the fact that uh, we are not fighting. 
So what we're going to do actually, since we have a longer border now, we can go soften these two up. This is what we're going to do now. We're going to raise our troops. Get them all together. Over here. And then we're going to raid. As we did before. Just to make sure everything is in order once we do arrive. And we should probably assign those commanders that we invited earlier. We're replacing some of the less talented people here. There we go. Alright. Yeah, we will never fiddle with the occult again. Sure, let's do this. Didn't we already do that before? I believe we did. So he has Battlefield Terrain Master, which is Narrow Flank. I never really figured out what the hell Narrow Flank means, but it's a flank type thing, so we're going to put him on the flank, really. We could take out his retinue while we're here. But for now... Okay, let's watch him. Because he raises a thousand. He's not going to match us. Unless he gets more troops. But that is why we are going to reduce the speed now. He can't raise troops here. Well, we could, but they would immediately be killed by my troops. So he saved these retinues from me taking them out. These levies, rather. We had this event earlier, so I'm not going to bother all that much. All right. A decision about our son and how he's going to be directed. As he's growing older, I can see that Karel could use some guidance. Okay. Let's see. We could have him be ambitious, but he would be our bitter rival. We could ourselves be stressed, but he would be diligent, which isn't a terrible trait to have. Uh, or, honestly, as a warrior, patience isn't the worst thing. So, we would get a malice, but we're already really, really good. So, we'd rather have him be patient. Uh, and us suffer a little bit because patience is a good trait as I just said so as you can see we're also looting quite a bit out of here there's some gold to be made and maybe we can even repay the Jewish merchants from this little campaign here he can't call his allies on this Ooh, look more technology to be adopted now in the economy now, economy, there are some things that just flat out increase income, possibly from trade, which is trade practices, and construction just reduces uh, build time. Now, what we generally want is we want to look at what we need to increase to be able to build further than what we're allowed to. So, to increase our wooden hill fort further, we need to have castle infrastructure to greater than one. So that is what we're going to upgrade. And now, once this building here is done, and we have the money, we can upgrade to a wooden hill fort, reinforced hill fort 3, which is good. More levy, and ever so slightly closer to become a feudal lord. Good. So we have destroyed everything here, and now we're looting it dry, and then we're going to do the same here. And we could engage him. We could fight him. We would win too. And thus we would decrease his, but also our army. Before we start our war to make him our tributary. But all of this is fine if you're just the biggest, baddest boy in the yard. Okay, so. Interesting. One of our... Generals can still learn a thing or two from me. So we can teach him to become a flanker or unyielding. Let's teach him to be unyielding. So this... This uh, general of ours is now a little bit better. Now, we only have three slots to lead in our army. However, we could also go ahead and find a large troop like these. And give them a specific... 
leader. So he is now leading them, which gives a few bonuses. So we're going to keep sieging this. As you see, he raised what he could, which was 90 troops, which is nothing. Oh, we're sieging and raiding. Taking him out. And this was built, so now we can build this. Alright. Let's... Siphon off the last bit of gold here. And now that we're done, we're going to move out again. Actually... We should engage his army. We should. And we will. Because we're going to win. He doesn't have any allies here. He can't. And our generals are much, much better than his. So this is a clear-cut case. And an event has fallen upon us in the Battle of Meath. I could have sworn I heard the enemy commander or gear barking orders, but as I search the plains, he is nowhere to be found. A fellow soldier finally informs me that he's been spotted cowering in the far back behind a large rock, and most disgracefully behind his troops. So we could have another duel or attempt it your way. If we lose this, I don't even know. He's infirm. Okay, come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Let's do this. Okay. Wait, wait, I yield! Orgea cries out. My spear high, I slow the deadly blow about to come down on my enemy. The man scrambles backwards, almost tripping over himself. I'll be your prisoner! Spare my life! He whimpers. So we could imprison him, which is really worthwhile because look at him. He's nothing. He's nobody. He's lowborn. There's no money. So he dies. There we go. First person killed. The warriors my steward raised to fight for my glory have become disillusioned. Whoops, because we didn't declare war. So our event spawned troops just disbanded in the middle of a battle. Whoopsie. Alright. Our ongoing struggle outside of Meath tribe has brought out the best of our military strategists. One of them is an Irish veteran with a penchant for innovation. He is suggesting that, we ret that he retire from the battlefront and return to Umahain to continue his work safe from flying arrows. Is that so, my friend? Well, we would gain military points. And military spread rate would go up. Or we could have him become a commander, but he's not really good. So let's check. Military points. How much do we need for this? 45 gold for 30 military technology points is a bit much, so... Let's have him join us our court, at our court. Good. So we defeated him, and we killed one of his commanders. So we weakened him significantly enough, for my taste. Let's stand our troops. Let them be replenished. All right. When it is sleeping or cuddling on my lap, my cat is precious angel. I do not understand how something can be so calm in one moment and only to fly across the room the next. And it gets these fits, it climbs over my belongings and it only is a matter of luck if something does not break. He's just playing. We lose 10 gold because we replace whatever. Uh, but we have a chance to become patient, which again, isn't a bad trait to be had, but also Wrath isn't the worst for who we are. But it's a 50-50 thing. The cat might leave us. Let's see if we become wrathful. No, the cat left us. Oh, shame. Well, never really know with these events. A child has gone missing, and it seems that everyone suspects me to have anything to do with that. Apparently, being a suspected occultist, everyone believes I might use the interests of children to read the future. 
Okay, let's attempt to clear our name, losing some prestige. Okay, as you can see, he's quite weakened now. We have taken out a bit of him, meaning we're far stronger already. So we're going to do this war that we were talking about. And actually, since he's so large, we might want to establish a real tributary strait. So this is a little bit more permanent of a situation for us. And he doesn't have any allies to call in. Okay. They don't... We can't do this. So we can only do this. Right, right, right. Well, he's young. We are young. Might still work. So let's do this. For this one, we're going to call in our allies. They have sat on their backsides long enough. Are we not going to call him? Nor are we going to call him. Just our tributaries. They may join us in this battle. And of course they do, immediately. So. Ah, right. Some, you can't merge armies if there's someone Raiding. Okay, so we want this army to attach to ours, so we become unbeatable. Actually, let's attach all armies for now. So we can see where he is and take him out. Oh. Uh, there's a battle happening up there. And we're going to try and intervene. But we're already locked into walking, so this battle is going to happen before we can arrive. So we need to hope that our ally is going to hold out long enough. So they are fighting, but we are also coming. And they are going to hold out long enough, clearly, for us to arrive and change the tide of battle. And there we go. Was well, a good strategy, but not good enough, my friend. Not good enough by a long shot. So we've beaten his army. We're going to kill everything that we can see right now, just so they don't even get a chance to form up. And now we're going to go ahead and set our friends here to hunt down the enemy. All right, the Battle of Brefin. In the middle of battle, I catch a sight of a boy wearing the same color as I am. I have just time to notice the fierce expression on his face when he is struck down. I feel a pang of guilt realizing how much he reminded me of my son, Carol. So we have a perfect opportunity to gain either patience or wrath. Well... Personal combat skill plus five and defense. Let's go for patience. Good. So we're going to keep fighting them. He can't escape this because he's locked in. So once we've beaten him here, we're going to siege his capital. And tell our allies to go hunt the enemy. So we can just siege in peace. While they take care of this army that's probably going to come back again. So our allies are also sieging as long as there's no enemy to be followed around. Who can we imprison? Just end your plot, my man. Just stop it. Don't be mean. So they're not happy with being called to war. But what can they do? It's 
nothing they can do. They are my vassals, as well as they should be. Alright, so our son has finished his education and he has become a skilled tactician, which is the second to highest that he could have gotten out of this. Which pleases us, and let's suggest the marriage go through. So he can begin having his own sons to give us heirs. And his marriage, of course, is everyone's concern, so let's have a little bit of bride money paid. And we're going to finish this very soon.